Yo, Darius Pitt here, coming at you with another quick one. Let's get into shooting dialogue scenes. We'll touch a little bit on how it's done, and then I'll let you guys know what I usually do. We're not gonna go over every little detail. I wanna keep this one short and sweet. Shots. Generally, you'd shoot an establishing shot, which is a wide shot. This shot gives the audience a sense of where the characters are in relation to each other and establishes where everything is in the scene. Then we move closer to the actors. We get two medium shots, or we get two close-ups, or two matching over the shoulder shots. We run through the scene a few more times, shooting all the coverage for one actor before shooting the reverse on the other actor. The last thing you'd shoot are all the inserts like cell phones, cars, whatever. If the lighting changes drastically, it's easy to light a tight close-up. This is what I do. Before I roll cameras, I walk through the entire scene with my actors. We can say scene two, scene three. We'll figure out the blocking, etc. It might be a one minute talk. It might be an eight minute talk. It depends on if I got to rehearse with them in advance. Tip, if you don't get any time to rehearse with your actors before shooting, do extra takes of the wide shot. I'll do extra takes even if I know they nailed it on take four or if I did a take and and I flubbed it up for camera reasons, I'm not gonna call cut, I'll just let it keep going because the actors need that time to just kind of experiment with the material. They need that time to feel it out, so that way when we get into the close-ups, they're all ready to go. When you start with a wide, you can make big changes in the scene, it never fails. There's the script that you write, and then there's what actually gets shot, and oftentimes, lots of things change in between those two processes. You may have a better idea for blocking, or the layout of the location may be very different from what you had in mind, so you gotta change the blocking or change how things happen to accommodate your location. The words may look great on the page, but they might not sound so good coming out of your actor's mouths on set, or you might not have good actors. It doesn't even matter if on take five of the wide shot, you make a big change and you decide that this actor should stand up the whole time instead of sit down for the rest of the scene. Awesome, make the change and just remember that so when you go and you shoot your coverages, it matches. A note on coverage. I noticed everyone kind of falls into their own style when it comes to shooting coverage. For example, some people like shooting over the shoulder shots and some people don't. I tend to reserve over the shoulder shots for family members or couples. Outside of that, I just don't use them. I prefer clean singles. The more you shoot, the more you'll fall into what works for you. There is no right or wrong. You don't have to cover the scene the way everybody tells you to. You don't have to do a wide shot and then you don't have to follow it up with two mediums and then two close-ups. You don't even have to shoot the mediums. You can go from wide to two close-ups. But the more practice you get at it and the more you'll kind of see things and find your own style of doing things. Cases where I will not shoot a wide shot. When you're out of time. I would say a good number of shoots that I have, I run out of time. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It's, it's just the nature of the beast. You, you shoot stuff and you run out of time. Now, if you run out of time and you're rushing, forget the wide shots, forget the medium shots, forget over the shoulder shots, just go in for close-ups. You can make a scene work with just close-ups. It might feel a little claustrophobic, but you can make it work. You can't always make a scene work with just a wide shot or just medium shots. Well, I do believe that's all that I got for you. If you enjoyed what you saw, please like, oh, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Debrit out. They would make a total of six stops on this traverse, collecting samples from large rocks,